Oh, now I see it. Good grief. All right. So through the talk, um, I'm not, I had to turn off the chat so that I can see my slides, uh, but I do, I would like to hear from people. So if you turn on your mic, I think you'll show up so that I can, you know, let you talk. I wanted to start out with this because I found it really funny. I'll let you read it. I think a lot of us when we are um, inundated with work and we can't seem to get started, um, this is what happens. We start breaking our big tasks into smaller tasks and then we're faced with a million small tasks. So. What is burnout? It is a state of emotional, mental, and often physical exhaustion brought on by prolonged or repeated stress. Um, so we're all doing what we love. Why on earth would we be burned out? Because we don't always feel in control of our job or role. Um, overextension is something that uh, especially perfectionists often do because you you don't want to just do the job but you want to do everything so there's a couple things that that you can watch for in yourself especially dread if you are dreading doing a part of your job then it is time to really think whether you need to do that part of your job um, cynicism, you might not catch that in yourself, but your friends might catch it and you might catch it in your friends or your teammates or your workmates. Cynicism is a real tip off that people are burning out and um, actually getting sort of crispy. So I'm sure we've all heard of reframing. But we all know why we joined the KDE community. We all know why we went to work at our job. We all know why we married the person we married or, you know, whatever, whatever thing it is that you're dealing with. You originally saw the mission. You saw a calling. I have I have been using reframing for quite a while. I remember how much I used to hate doing the dishes and they would pile up in the sink. And then I started thinking, well, do you like to eat a meal? Sure. What what makes eating a meal? It it involves thinking about what you want to prepare, making sure you have the ingredients, which might in, include shopping. It includes the cooking. And then the cleanup after. It's all the thing. And once I started to think about that, the dishes just got done. In fact, my dishwasher is running right now. But even when I didn't have a dishwasher. <laughs> um, the other thing that you can do, um, and this uh, I used the last time I burned out. A few times I have burned out and just left the project, which is, and one of those times at least without a word which is just the worst i mean if you have somebody in your group that just has gone you should call them up or go to their house or however you can to figure out what is going on um, because maybe they just need a little help to step back gracefully i mean sometimes you tr well and truly are burned out you're going to need to um, step back from being maintainer or even from, you know, whatever you're doing as a part of the team. Or you might just need to prune out the parts that don't fit your own personal mission. Um, the last time I was burning out, it was because my dad was declining in health. He did eventually die a few years back. Um, and I found that I could just hardly look at IRC, which 
I love IRC. I've been in IRC ever since 2001. Um, and I couldn't, because of my uh, various jobs, I couldn't entirely leave. But I just stopped reading channels that I didn't need to do for my job. And that helped a lot. So I had a few low, very low volume channels left. Same with email. I started searching for the emails from various um, lists that I knew that I needed to read. I would scan for the threads that I needed to be in on and just not read the rest. And pretty soon I started to feel better. Um, it's also important to get lots of sleep, eat well, do something besides stare at your screen, you know, get out and take a walk, go see a movie with somebody, if that's even possible anymore. <laughs> um, you see why I want p other people to speak up? Because some of you have things that you could offer here. How to help others. Sometimes when you watch other people burn out, it actually sort of burns you out yourself. And you have to remember that you are very powerful. If you call somebody, if you even tell them in IRC how much you appreciate what they have been doing, it is really powerful. And again, let's see, I would welcome uh, uh, other people. Sorry, I, I looked at the chat for a second. <laughs> um, I would welcome other people giving their experiences. Um, People aren't having a problem hearing me, right? No problems. Go okay. ahead. Excellent. All right. Um, okay. <sighs> and I would like to mention at the end, uh, seriously, I need other people to talk because you all have stories. Um, our, I read this fantastic article on Medium. Your surge capacity is depleted and it's why you feel awful. And I think it is what we are all going through. This isn't just about, you know, your work in KDE, your work on your job. You know, you as a parent, you as a child, <laughs> you as uh, a partner or whatever. It It is just what we are all going through being um, semi um, locked in our houses and you know we're not at academy we're not hugging one another we aren't usually even able to um, see our family and those who can see our family are often just um, in the house with them and you know you don't know if you love them or hate them so I think that this is an extra layer of of not quite burnout, but we all knew, we all realized that we had an emergency and we needed to deal. And so we put on that surge capacity and it's been months now. I mean, it has been months. And some of us have gone through people that we love dying and it, it's just a lot. So, um, Please write us at the community working group if you need help shaping, reshaping your job, you need help with an individual in your team. If you want to step down gracefully and you want someone to be by your side as you have a difficult conversation, because we're here for you. That 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 is what we're for. We are not police, we are for you. We're here for you. And I don't have a slide that says 
hey, everybody, if you need to talk, let's talk. I guess I can put community. All right. That is, it, I, I always have to look that up actually. <laughs> Just look for community working group on <laughs> DuckDuckGo and it takes me to our page and I get that address. So it's, it's not. All right, I'm really tired of hearing myself talk. So, so. so hey, February. Yeah. Uh, this is Bowdoin. Um, you are talking about burning out, and um, maybe I should add the camera as well. Yes, okay, you can can do all of that. Allow, 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 allow. <sighs> so. At this point, what's actually maybe burning out me most is, is it's, it's just the kids. Just today, someone approached me telling me, mm, I can't paint, I can't paint, I cannot paint, please help me. I'm pretty sure she is under tough and I want to help her. But we are actually at millions of them right now. Um, the reason I originally got into hacking on KD software, creator stuff like that is like, okay, I want to have free painting software for everyone. And now it's for everyone. I can't help everyone. And that's you can, just that's true. Yeah, that is true. And, and I feel that way sometimes too. Um, the thing is for Krita, there are lots of places where people can get help. It doesn't have to be you. There's, <laughs> there's loads of people who can help. So sometimes you just have to, you just have to step back. It's, so I, I thought about putting this slide in, but I didn't. But every time you take an airplane, remember you used to take air, airplane <laughs> flights? Before they take off, they tell you, if there's a problem and the oxygen masks come down, put on your own oxygen mask first, and then you can help someone else. This is really important especially for those of us who do lots of helping. You have to put on your own mask first and be breathing, you know, some oxygen into your lungs before you can help someone else. You have to get a good night's sleep or you can't function the next day. You need to eat good food or you get sick. You absolutely have to take care of yourself first. And then out of your, your extra, out of your bounty, out of your surge capacity, you can help those who are in need. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have, I have something to, to say. Excellent. Um, I really appreciate what you're saying. And um, I think I, I really appreciated hearing what Baud said too. Uh, I, speaking personally here, I'm the father of two small children and seeing what's happened to them during the last six months has been absolutely heartbreaking. Um, this is something that, you know, I mostly keep to myself and don't talk about, but it's really hard to deal with a lot. And I think the point that I wanna make is you don't know what other people are dealing with. And that's why it's so important for us to be kind to other people, because you don't know if that flippant remark or that harsh word 
might just be the thing that sends somebody over the edge on a particularly difficult day. Um, speaking personally here, KDE has in a lot of ways been my mental health lifeline. I, I genuinely don't know how I would be coping if not for KDE. Over the last couple of months, KDE has given me a sense of mission and purpose and made it even just a little bit easier to wake up every morning and face the horror of the real world, especially in the United States of America right now. Um, Amen. So I want to thank everybody here for everything that you do in helping to make this a, a, a welcoming and loving place. And I think it's so important that we keep focusing on that that we we make sure always to be kind to each other and you know when when we're feeling bad we need to make sure that we don't express that we don't we need to make sure that we don't grate on each other and be mean and rude to each other just because we're feeling it we need to support each other and help each other right now it's it's so important yes it's it's actually um, so much better if you feel like yelling at somebody in IRC um, or in an angry email. If <laughs> You can write the email. Just don't send it and then go take a walk. In fact, you might want to sleep on it. Um, I, I put in the chat, I put the two rules of Linux checks because I only have two. Be polite, be helpful. And if you can't be polite and helpful, then really go you know go into your bathroom close the door and scream at the top of your lungs until you start crying and get it out <laughs> because it it is so bad to spread your your anger your frustration um onto other people instead of giving them what is really in your heart which is your love your sense of mission and what we know we can do I mean, I couldn't participate in all of Academy because it started when I was st still asleep. But um, what I could, it's so amazing what we're doing. Um, we're doing wonderful things and we're going to keep doing wonderful things. And I think we just have to keep that in mind. And it's sometimes really hard. And that's what this talk is for, is just for all of us to realize that it is sometimes really hard for us and it's sometimes really hard for the person that is irritating you so much in IRC, on a mailing list, uh, on the forums, whatever. Um, yeah. I hear people talking in the chat. It It's surprising how much um, actually speaking with your voice helps. So, uh, this can be a therapy session for a few more minutes. <laughs> uh, so, Hi, uh, one of the things which really can lead to uh, burnout is fear of missing out. And I'm particularly bad at it, I guess. Uh, I usually have fear of missing out and just involve myself into many things and then can never get rid of it or something like that. Uh, but in the previous years I have learned uh, in this very short which I have learned that it's okay to step out and it's okay to get uh, rid of fear of missing out. So, yeah, that's what I want. I sometimes worry about you, Bushin, because you do so much, and I do hope you take time to sleep. So, uh, over the last few months, I found myself quite a few times in a situation where I, I think I was at the brink of burning out, because for the most part, KDE is just a hobby for me, and a hobby that I love very much, and I, I care very much about, but I don't have as much time for it as I would like to. And even then, even when I 
actually found some time to do something between having a job and doing a master's degree. Even when I found some time, I sometimes found myself in a position where I actually had time, but I was just staring at my screen, knowing, okay, I, I could be productive right now, but I had no real, no real sense of what to do, no real motivation of doing anything except for knowing, oh, you should be productive right now. And that was at some point I decided, okay, I need a break from all of this. And it just so happened that it was right before the plasma sprint, the virtual one this year. And I said, okay, you, you will do this sprint. And after the sprint, you will take a week off of everything from KDE, which aligned quite good with some other personal plans I had. So what I did was I essentially, I closed all the KDE related chat applications. I deleted the matrix client from my phone. I just ignored everything KDE for a whole week. And I felt so much better afterwards. And I, I had some new energy and new motivation to do things. And if you find yourself in the, the position of, oh, you should be doing KDE stuff now, but you really don't want to, then take a break and things will look brighter again in the future. That sense of dread is a real thing. So thanks for recognizing that in yourself and take care of yourself. Hey, Nicholas. Um, about that, I there were a few personal projects unrelated to KDE that I had to um, suspend, I would say, because I kept thinking, no, I should be working on my presentation. And uh, so I thought, well, when Academy ends, I can finally go back to those. And now I find myself at the end of Academy with a, a long to-do list of things that have uh, shown up during the buffs. And I really need to make an effort to, if I was planning to make a break, actually do it. Actually take a break if I actually need it. Um, it's, it's always a, a conflict between, a, oh, but I want to get those things, those things done anyway. But uh, yeah, it, it's bad in the long term if I will end up burned out. Well, I think it's important to, to listen to your heart, do the things that bring you joy. And I very often find that doing something that makes my life better in some way, I mean, when I was first starting to work on this talk, <laughs> instead I found myself cleaning the back window, <laughs> which now the sunshine comes in and it's not full of crap from the weather. So that actually helped me get my talk, you know, organized because I could think about the talk as I was cleaning the window. Oh, Nuno says, if it's not fun, it's not worth it. Well, it has to be fun at some point. But, you know, reframing the task, uh, as I talked about, you know, dinner dishes, uh, if it becomes part of something that's fun, you can do all the bits, but just tackle the fun part first. Yay. Hey, hi, Alex. <laughs> hi. Um, so I fixed my mic by switching laptops. Uh, just something I wrote in the chat about someone's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be so sad when I when this is over. Well, con drop is a, a thing. A con drop is a, when you stop, leave a conference and it was so great and it was so awesome. And then oh, there's no conference anymore and you lost the people and you're really sad. So uh, that's a thing. And you, know, you try to re-involve yourself with the community some maybe to make up for it. Um, take care of yourself. Expect to, to be a little unhappy because, you know, this is a pretty fun conference. Yep. I think a lot of us were dreading not seeing people in. I I know I'm I'm missing the, the hugs. I, I'm just I'm missing the hugs. Um, but uh, there are advantages to the online life. Uh, uh, my genealogy society, I've 
been helping get everybody to um, online meetings. And we now meet way more than we used to. And you can look in somebody's eyes. We use Google Meet. Um, so it's, it's, it's bigger than the tiny little, I guess if I want to see myself bigger, I can just get rid of the presentation. But um, you can look in somebody's eyes and you listen to one person at a time instead of having those side conversations. And uh, one of the things I do love about Academy, always did, was the hallway track because the talks are not always that fascinating for me because they're way more technical than I am. I always like the, the intro from the end, but the middle sort of loses me often. So, um, but we have a hallway track here and it's really fun. So I would like it if even more people showed up. Alex shows up with her daughter, which is just awesome. So, <laughs> all right, I think we have like four more minutes. So who else wants to speak up? Oh, Aid says there's non hugly people. That's true. I, I don't just grab people. I say hug. I'll just say hug <laughs> right now. <laughs> and yes, um, breaks are good. Everybody, I mean, there's a reason that Europe it, people take vacations. Americans are not so big on vacations, unfortunately. Um, but in my family, we always had the cabin where we could go. And if anybody comes to visit me, I'll take you up to the cabin in the mountains. So not right now because there's a forest fire between us and the cabin. But unless you come this week, come any other time, we'll go up to the cabin. Yeah, the fires. Yeah, it's very smoky here. Um, yesterday, the, the weather report was sunny with patchy smoke. I've never heard that before. Um, it was blowing from the east to the west, and I live in the west of my state, just south of Seattle. Today, it is a south wind, and it's blowing from Oregon and California. So, 